एक बात बता दो तीन बटन बनाने के तुझे कोई क्यों पैसे देता है इतनी बढ़िया सर एक बात बता तुझे फालतू का रिस्क उठाना क्यों है बट मुझे अब पता है क्या करना है क्या फ्री नहीं मैं सोच रहा हूँ एक वेबसाइट बनाऊ अपनी खुद की कौन सा बनाई कॉन्ट्रैक्ट साइन किया है क्या मैंने कोई पता नहीं कहाँ से आ जाती है ये डिजाइनिंग विजाइनिंग करने It doesn't matter what softwares you know today because with time every technical skill gets outdated. What truly stays with you are the core principles, your mindset and the way you think about your subject. Welcome to the Foundations for UX Design, a 15 episode series that will take you through all the important lessons and realizations I've had so far as a self-taught UX designer. My name is Ansh Mehra and I am a product designer and storyteller at zaddle.com which is a virtual events hosting platform. In this session we will be learning some of the most common mistakes students make when they begin their career as a UX designer. I hope you've seen all videos from the series preceding this episode. With that being said, I hope you enjoy this session. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. All right, welcome to lecture 5 for foundations for UX design. Today we're going to talk about a very simple yet a very practical way of deciding what colors to choose when you're just starting your UX project because if you have seen the previous episode you'd realize that there's a plan with which you take things forward but you can't really start making your components and your layouts and your wireframes and even your draft visual designs until unless you have some basic idea about your color palette so it's not like whatever that we discussed today is the best way moving forward but this entire series is just for people who are absolutely clueless so what i'm going to tell you today is going to help you just get that clarity as to how do you start defining your colors how do you declare them on figma but before we move forward I'm going to assume that you have seen my first four episodes and you've started watching the office hours playlist so getting started new features playlist that would be done but you should definitely start binge watching the office hours playlist on YouTube and start making notes of it on your notion if you haven't that's completely all right you can finish the syllabus after this video and in the end i hope that you're taking care of your mind and your body because nothing else really matters if your mind and body are not with you now when we talk about colors the most simple and logical way is to split them in three buckets so there is brand colors and these brand colors would reflect your brand identity and as a ux designer you don't really have to figure these things out so whatever brand that you're working for if you're the only designer you have to ask them are there any colors that truly define you like a fixed set of colors so they will be your brand colors then you need neutrals which are mostly grays so these are fillers for your backgrounds your surfaces your text any floating card anything anything that is neutral would have these gray colors and then we have semantic colors semantic colors would be used for your success warning and error state so in most cases whatever color palette that you have so a color palette is a collection of colors and each and every color can be called as a swatch so every single swatch is going to fall in one of these three buckets now when i talk about brand colors oops let me just get rid of this thing when i talk about brand colors you have the primary brand color and you have an accent brand color so primary brand color is basically that one core core color that instantly makes people remember you could be blue could be red whatever but that one color would actually be filled in 60 to 70% of your main call to action components or main components that reflect your branding and the accent brand color could be something that complements that color and used around in 10% of your interfaces when it comes to the neutrals it's very very important that you declare black as an individual color 
you have white as an individual color and then you have shades that transition from black to white so you have to figure out and we're going to discuss how we do this but you would have a lot of grays but you also have black and white so everything comes in between and then we talk about semantics obviously you have red or a shade of red for error warning and danger prompts then you have green for success confirmation and acceptance and then you have yellows for warning or caution now let's understand how colors work because you must have heard about rgb or hsl or hsla but to truly play and make proper decisions for these colors you have to understand the logic behind these conventions and the difference behind these conventions now every color that you use on your platform or every color that you would use in your figma system would have four main components right now what you see right now is a swatch from a palette that i've simply created just for testing there is an rgb hex code which in this case is hash 0d ff42 and then there is a name to that color because every single color has its own individual name you can create a name right and then you have hsl the hue saturation luminance value i know sounds intimidating don't worry we will cover all these things and then there is this thing called as a dark theme token so i am saying dark theme because it could be any theme but i am making a platform we talked about this we are making a platform we are assuming that we are making a platform that would sell lessons or courses under my brand is just a fictional project so i have a dark theme so i tell them that guys for this specific dark theme i want you to understand that this fuchsia blue is the brand primary now in most cases mine is going to be red but just for fictional cases we're going to figure out that fine we need a brand primary color in my company in my dark theme fuchsia blue is the brand primary so there are three levels of declaration on the top we have your hex code your hex code has a name in this case it's fuchsia blue but fuchsia blue is interpreted as brand primary in my universe because fuchsia blue can be anything it could be an accent color in some other brand but let's switch on the classroom mode so i'm going to get my ipad and we're going to go in depth about how rgb works how colors work and you have to figure out that whatever that i'm saying it's just me scratching the surface you have to at the end of this video you would have to go to medium you would have to go to all these different websites and learn properly as to how these things work but i would still try to make sure that i cover the most important elements i think it's true when they say that one of the most effective powerful impressive compression algorithms are existing inside our eyes because we see so many colors on a daily basis so many visuals and our brain is able to compress them into very very small signals like very very small size signals which are transferring through this entire body but code or technology or softwares they understand color in a different way there's a language that they use just how our brain has its own way of interpreting colors even technology and code and whatever software that you've been using they interpret color in a specific way so let's just understand how do machines even look at color so when you look at any color on your screen it's basically coming from light which is being radiated from the screen now every screen is basically made up of pixels and every single pixel this small little box here i'm going to call it pixel and this pixel has three components it has a red component a green component and a blue component together they would make rgb now every single color that you see on your screen is only possible because of these small pixels now when you look at an rgb hex code it somewhat looks like this 1 2 a b 5 f so if you really look at it closely it's actually a six digit number on not even six digit there are six characters when i say that my hex code is 12 a b 5 f 
the first two actually represent the red of that color the redness level this would be the green and this would be the blue now a lot of people know that numbers go from 0 to 9 but in hexadecimal notation that is currently being used to actually declare this RGB value actually uses the alphabet after 9 so after 9 we have a b c d e f so when you say 0 to 9 it works but this is 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 so including 0 you have you know 16 values now the interesting part here is that without even looking at a color you can actually read the hex code and understand the nature of this color so when i say something like f f one two three one i instantly know that f is at the very end of the hexadecimal notation it probably means 15 and 15 1 and 2 pretty decent 3 1 also pretty decent so this color is really really strong it's somewhat red now when we talk about the color black black has no color when you look at a pixel if a pixel is completely switched off if it is not radiating any light when your mobile screens are not radiating anything they are pitch black so they are basically zero 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 and when we talk about white if you've seen that newton's disc if you have a disc of colors and if you rotate them very fast you would actually get white light it is actually f f f f f f all components are at their maximum and that is why you see bright white light now <clears throat> the second most popular convention is the hsl convention h stands for hue s stands for saturation and l stands for luminance so you remember that palette that swatch that i showed you there i had an rgb value as well as an hsl value and hsl had this really scary bracket and numbers and a percentage a lot of things were happening we will get to that as well but let's just understand what is hue i wouldn't go into too much detail but just to give you a logical overview there is a circle a hue disc you can visualize a disc and you have a bunch of colors in that disc and if i make this the center and this as zero degrees as you move as you rotate around the circumference of this disc you would eventually increase the degrees so you would have 15 and 30 and 45 and so forth these are not accurate but just to explain you the point eventually as you rotate from zero degrees you will reach a point where you eventually end where you started so i would show you when i open figma if you switch your rgb settings to hsl you'd realize that there is red at the very first of that spectrum and red at the very end because when you complete that entire 360 degree circle you reach the color red so every single degree has its own hue every single uh, point on that disc has its own hue when we come to the saturation is basically the strength of that hue oops and then luminance is basically the brightness so if the luminance is low your color is slowly shifting towards black if the luminance is really high your color is shifting towards white when you are working on figma you would realize that there's one more component apart from hsl which is hsl a this a stands for alpha alpha basically means opacity if something is at a zero percent alpha it wouldn't be visible if something is at 50 percent alpha then the opacity is basically 50 percent if alpha is 100 percent then it's absolutely opaque so 
when I showed you that code, you would have seen something like this zero, you know, 12, uh, 38 and hundred percent. So this means that this is my hue, the zero degrees hue. Then you have the saturation levels, the luminance level and the alpha level. Every color can be converted from RGB into HSLA. Now, one interesting point here that when you are making your grays, you want to make sure that it's absolutely gray. So RGB, your RGB numbers, they should be identical. So if this is 12, even my green levels need to be 12 and my blue levels also need to be 12. So hashtag 12, 12, 12, 12 is gray. It is a shade of gray. But if I had a number that said, let's choose a brighter shade. If I had a number that says 24, 12, 12, this is not gray. Why? Because this has more shades of red. The red is more than your green and your blue. And if you're experimenting with your colors, let's just say you have a color. Uh, it is something like, you know, 24, A, B, 1, 2. And your client says that, can you make it cooler? So instead of going to the color picker, which is actually very tricky, you can simply increase the blue component of this RGB value. So you know that I don't have to touch the reds. I don't have to touch the greens. I can touch the blue component and maybe ramp it up to 52, right? So this is a very simple way of understanding these colors, the logic behind these colors. And when we open Figma, I'll show you in a practical way as to how do you use this information for your decisions, right? So let's go back to Figma now. All right. So we are back. Uh, there are two websites that are regularly used for getting the name for my hex code. So if you had checked out the previous slide, you'd see that, okay, this is a hex code and there's a really fancy name for it, but you can't really name colors on your own. So two really, really interesting websites. One is Chirag, chir.ag slash projects. So I'll just show you how this thing works. As soon as I go to this website, it asks me whatever color I want. So I can basically put in any hex code and it would tell me the name for that. So if I put something like, you know, 4343 uh, AB, wow, it's a color called Gigas. If I make any other number, maybe like one, two, it says Tory blue. So it's a very simple way of getting good names for your colors. There's also colorname.com, which is again, a really, really good resource. So you can actually consider both of these options and just figure out whatever suits you. I feel that it's really important to have good names for your colors. It just gives your entire brand a good vibe. So yes, you just have to put your hex code here and whatever color that you type, it would tell you the name for it. So let's get back to the slides. Now, now that you're done with your brand primary color, let's understand how do you decide your gray? So I told you that you would have black on one end, you would have white on the other end. Now, how do you decide how many grays I want? So let's just come outside of these slides and I'm going to get my Figma menu back and I'm going to minimize myself. So probably keep myself here. All right. And let's just say I make this color black make a rectangle and then inside Figma, let me open cursor pro so that it's easier for you. And let me open key caster so that you can actually see whatever keys that I'm pressing because I use a lot of shortcuts. Yeah. Let's just put this here on Figma. If you just type the red component, like if just two digits, let's just say zero, zero. Figma would automatically duplicate that pair for the other two components. So if I write say one, two, it would make it one, two, one, two, one, two. So in this case, I'm just going to make it zero. 
you can't see anything so let me just increase the brightness now i have my black and at the very end let's just keep it let's just reduce the size of it and let's make this white now if i open my fill inside here by default it is hsl if this was rgb this is how things would look like all components are zero this 100% stands for the alpha if i switch from rgb to hsl there's also hsb but I, we wouldn't go into that right now there's also css which basically converts that entire rgb into a function a css function the values remain the same so instead of 100% the alpha value is 1 but rgb values are still 0 but i want to go and select hsl now when i take this copy here hold the option key and just duplicate it let me just make some grays right and this is very subjective it depends on you how how many grays do you want it's very very subjective in this case i decided that you know let me have one two three four five five grays but in reality i would still recommend you to have at least 10 to 13 or maybe even 14 grays because you need a lot of grays it's just a safe convention now if i know that my mid my starting point here of my luminance value luminance value is zero right let's increase the font size and at this point my luminance value is 100 right let's open this this is my value and i have one two three four five six one two three four five six i have six jumps so it's very simple all i can do is do 100 by 7 and probably get 14.2 right and this is just very random math i'm just giving you a concept of how to increment the grays so what i'll do is i'll just go into my hsl panel and instead of choosing my grays directly from the color picker i would add 14 to the lightness value then select the next color open fill and add 14 again right this would become 14 into 3 this would become 14 into 4 this would become 14 into 5 and at this point i've basically reached 70 and this is 100 so i think i've done i've skipped one level i think i we can probably add one more 14 into 6 you have 84 so now even though there's some mm, calculation error here you still have a really good palette that gradually moves from black to white so a lot of people have read it in a couple of articles they say that you should simply play with opacity so i if i take this black here and if i make it say if the background was say pitch white if i make the opacity as 70 percent or if not 100 let me just reduce 14 percent i technically get the same output right but this is not the right way to do things because you will end up with a bunch of problems with the opacity game so never do that i would strongly strongly urge you to declare all your rgb values with concrete alpha like 100 percent alpha and just decide how many grays would you need but a safe number is between 11 to 13. now there are different ways of naming your grays you can probably say something like if if you have a dark theme so you can probably say that this is my monochrome base and then you have base 100 base 200 base 300 this could become white i don't know white 300 then this could become white 200 or something of that sort you just have to figure out a name convention a lot of people use neutral so they would call their black as neutral zero and this would become say neutral 100 neutral 200 neutral 300 neutral 400 eventually you know their their neutral 1000 would be you know white or maybe they would call it something like black or they would have sp split their entire grays into three buckets 
so there are many many ways there's not one correct answer and the only reason why i'm not giving you exact examples is because these things are very subjective it's too subjective as to what are your requirements like what does your platform look like do you also have a dark theme and a light theme so you have to figure out a proper naming convention and you can iterate on that as well it's not necessary for you to make all these things final from the get go but don't forget black and white because these two are the spectrums so when people say you have to declare your grays often a lot of people forget to declare white and black just because it's such an easy color such a common colors but you have to declare that as well and i think the next step is about your semantic colors which are your success color your warning colors and basically all these prompts that you see your information color but in those cases accessibility plays a huge role so let's just say this is my base i'm making a light theme software and uh, this is just a rectangle and i decide that i want this as my danger color and i'm going to work with rgb i always work with rgb and one interesting fact here that when you go into your inspect panel in your css also by default it would give you the rgb values hsl basically helps me when i'm deciding colors but when i'm working i always work with rgb now i really like this red color it's very soothing it's very you know very comfortable not very scary and let me just add a text that says delete right put these together probably add a border radius of 10 Now let's check the contrast. There's a plugin called Contrast. If I select this red, it is actually failing. I want my contrast to be above 4.5 is to 1. It's failing for a lot of things. Even though I can perfectly see this color, it is technically failing. If I select this text, that is also failing for normal text. So let's just try to understand what color would work here. So I would open my HSL. I oh notice how this is at 360 because we are at the red. So can you notice that if this is my circumference of that huge disk that we referred, it's basically spread out into a line. If I go to the first part of it with HSL as zero, nothing changes. If I make it 360, nothing changes. And this is where things get really interesting. You would notice that this box also changes as I shift from RGB to HSL. So. if i increase my saturation component you would notice that the pointer is slowly either going towards gray because gray is when i hit zero saturation and otherwise if i keep increasing that value the maximum that i can hit is at 100 so at 100 this color right here this hue is at its most powerful and most bold shade now when i play with the luminance i move either towards white if i decrease the luminance i would move towards pitch black so let's just undo everything this is my color the best solution that i can have is probably open this panel and make it zero and just play with the saturation so can you notice how once i reduced it it's actually passing it's passing one of the tests but it's failing now Oh this is now I've come closer. I think if I increase it's failing completely. Oh at this point it's actually succeeding. So you would say that this is so so different from where we started right like this is so bad. How how is it failing on every single place? So this is an experiment that you have to do. You can check out other design systems as well as to what colors they use. but uh, yes it's a tricky subject as to what kind of reds are suitable for you if i talked about say the success color that would completely completely lose its legibility in fact when we talk about the text in most cases when it comes to the success prompt a black color text would really work so if you if you look at spotify's interface they have a really really interesting brand palette i would recommend you guys to read about their accessibility guidelines how they came up with their brand palette i think it's a it's a brilliant case study but yes th- something to consider not something it's actually very very important that you consider accessibility not just for your semantic colors but even for your brand colors 
so i feel that your grace can still lose out on that stuff because you don't have to capture the surface or a floating box but when it comes to text or your cta's the legibility should be really high so you have to make sure that these things are working well so yes th- um let's understand how do we name our colors on figma because how you name them actually influences the way they appear in your brand palette so if i click on this color actually i also have my own colors so i use these colors for these presentations that you see but if you use a slash convention say primary slash gray 1 or neutral slash gray 1 and then your next color is you know gray 2 and your third color is gray 3 basically figma would club them together in the styles panel so let's do it right now let me show you a very quick way of naming them properly let's just assume that this is my brand palette here right i have filled them up and if you notice my layers panel currently calls them as rectangles so before even renaming them what i'll do is i'll open sorter just to make sure that they are arranged so their left layer order and their spatial order on the right side is absolutely identical so i'll go to position i'll search for position and there's this option within sorter it's called sort position so i did that to make sure that all my layers are sorted properly now my rectangle this rectangle 2 which is at the left side is on the first item on the first placeholder and my white one is at the very end and this is the order that i really wanted before that let's just see how what the order was before i sorted them oh so it was actually completely opposite yeah but it, they were in order but completely opposite so let's just make it sort position then again command slash and rename and let's just call them as testing slash that's all so now all of them are called testing slash uh what i'll do is i'll maybe call all of them as you know grays they are all my grays so let's just call them neutral slash gray slash and let me select the ascending number order so it's going to name them as gray 1 gray 2 gray, gray 3 gray 4 and let's rename them awesome now i have all of these named together with the slash convention now if i select all of them and open the styler plugin and inside sli- styler if i click on generate styles it would instantly make styles and actually create all of them and name them in a way that my layers name these names become the names of the styles that i've just created so on the right side you can see that all of them are declared in a second you don't have to go into the layers panel and you know do all those things now if i look at my color styles you would realize that everything is inside this palette called neutral so the slash convention has helped me put them together neatly and very cleanly i don't think that's a word but yeah you get the point so once you're done with that all you have to do is open your libraries panel and publish this once you publish this when you open any other file inside your entire repository you can simply enable this colors library and then start making your components so it's very very important that you do this and now that we are beginning our journey into the world of ux design i would recommend you guys to just read more about design systems build a habit and there are three websites that i regularly follow one is designsystemsrepo.com then there's designsystems.com and then designsystemsforfigma.com when you open this website let me open it for you when you open this website you can actually see all the amazing amazing design systems that are actually being used in real time and when you open them you, it would actually take you to that exact figma file so it would take you to the figma community and you can actually open their design system and learn from the best you can literally learn from the best and there's there's so much of inspiration out there so you can make use of these three resources when it comes to design system so if you are learning about color download and figure out how 15 of these different design systems are managing their colors right so do check that out uh we're going to end this session here because i want you guys to do your own homework just one small announcement 
There are some bonus sessions that I've been conducting on Graphy by Unacademy and they're not necessarily about UX but they are based on complementary skills. So one session is on how do you learn faster and how do you monetize whatever that you've learned. Then another session on Notion because I'm a huge fan of Notion. I use Notion for so many things in my life to, you know, just increase my productivity and feel eased. Uh, otherwise i would just get stressed with all the information and all the things that i have to keep track of so there's one session on how i use notion for documentation so i take you through my entire notion repository and then in the end there's a session for beginners on how to get a design job that pays you well like how do you start a very very interesting portfolio what do you write how do you approach people how do you make the best of your time how do you present your work so a bunch of stuff is mentioned there but let's just summarize before we end we discussed the meaning of RGB, HSL and HSLA, where A stands for alpha. Then we understood the logic behind different grays. Uh, how can you read a hex code? I think I repeated this point. Sorry for that. Then we also discussed accessibility as to how it's really, really important to check the contrast levels of whatever colors that you're using on your theme. So if it's a light theme, if it's a dark theme, you know, testing varies. And then naming and declaration and organization of your color styles. So if you enjoyed this session, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you like this video and comment with your honest review. But I feel that more than commenting, it really, really helps me when you guys post up a story on Instagram. So if you are really, really into that entire story review game, I would be super, super happy if you could put up a review and tag me on unshmera.design. That's my work account. And on Twitter, I'm unshmera with three A's at the end. I hope you're having a good, good time. I hope you guys are taking care of yourself. And yes, the Hindi version of this entire episode will be released next week. And in the next episode, we will discuss typography. How do you declare type? So once we're done with colors, then we move towards type, which is a really, really important component of your system. All right, guys, take care. Thank you for watching. Hello? Bro, how do you make jobs for resume? I mean, most people edit free templates free templates. So, how did you make your resume? I don't have a job in my resume. What? Why do you do that? I have done three or four interviews. And I have one thing that I have said. That you were a filmmaker first. फिर आप ग्राफिक डिजाइनर बन गए फिर आप म्यूजिक और रैप में घुस गए अब आप कह रहे हो मुझे यूएक्स डिजाइनर बनना है वो तो है भाई तू हर छह महीने अपनी स्ट्रीम चेंज कर लेता है अरे बट इस बार फाइनल है मुझे फिल्म मेकिंग पसंद तो बहुत है बट अभी मेरे लिए यूएक्स एक बेटर ऑप्शन है तो तूने लिखा क्या क्या था आपने रिज्यूम में मैं तो सब लिखा है स्कूल की अचीवमेंट्स मेरा यूट्यूब चैनल मेरे पोस्टर्स सब कुछ हाँ तो मुझे लग रहा है यही प्रॉब्लम है मतलब अरे मेरी शो में वैसे बात हुई थी तो कह रहे थे कि ट्राई करो कि रेज्यूमे में सिर्फ वही लिखो जो रिक्रूटर ढूंढना चाहता है मुझे भी यही लग रहा है आज मैं बैठ के थोड़ी और रिसर्च करूंगा क्योंकि ज्यादा चीजें लिखने से फायदा कम नुकसान ज्यादा हो रहा है हाँ वही अब यार तू खुद सोचना रिक्रूटर भी अपनी वो एक स्किल ढूंढना चाह रहा है बस हाँ यही गलती हो रही है मुझे फिगर आउट करना होगा की मेरी कोर स्किल क्या है आई कॉन्ट जैसे की मैं सब करता हूँ मुझे अब एक या दो चीज पिक करनी होगी और फिर उसी हिसाब से अपना रेज्यूमे टेला करना पड़ेगा हाँ चल अच्छा है तेरा कॉल आ गया शाम को पिक्चर देखने चलना है अभी पागल है क्या यार रिज्यूमे का पता नहीं क्या करना है और पिक्चर देखने चलो हाँ चल चल ठीक है चल ओके बाय ओके ओके